Once upon a time, in a small village in the Eckermark region, a helpless little magpie named Else lay in the middle of a chicken coop. She had just fallen out of her nest, which was in an old apple tree, surviving a fall of nearly five meters. Sadly, there are no recordings of her at the discovery site. But who could have expected such a thing? At first, no one knew anything about her overall condition including how long she had been there without food. It was assumed the fall had happened recently, as the free-roaming chickens hadn't noticed her yet. The next day brought some clarity. Else had been fed by her parents up until she fell, evidenced by the insect parts she excreted, primarily beetles. This indicated she was a viable, perhaps the bravest, and most adventurous young bird. Taking one step, too many out of the nest, a half-hour car ride in scorching heat, without air conditioning left the little magpie exhausted, refusing food and water until the evening. However, by the next morning, she seemed much levelier, hungry, and eagerly gobbling up the food offered. Though the initial food wasn't optimal, its composition improved over the next few days. Settling into her new home, the first video sequences show Else in a makeshift nest, a box lined with towels, sweaters, and t-shirts. She began preening her sparse feathers, looking clumsy and unsteady at less than two weeks old. Maybe just 11 or 12 days, she was still very young. Her diet at this stage included a daily freshly cooked egg, enriched with caught flies, mosquitoes, and gnats mixed into a paste plus grated empty snail shells for calcium. Soon, finely chopped maggots were added. In this comfortable box, Else could sit well without the risk of falling. On firmer surfaces, she could topple over easily, needing recovery time. But this was nothing compared to the fall from the nest that had dramatically changed her life. Initially, it was uncertain what would become of the little bird long term. Keeping her wasn't an option. So I tried to find a suitable rescue station to give her the best start in life. Unfortunately, all attempts failed. They were either too far away, or unreachable. Time was pressing, and as else, who I had already named, imprinted on me, it became clear she needed to stay. She recognized me as her caretaker. Under supervision, else began making her first excursions into the garden, step by step, hop by hop. She explored her new surroundings, occasionally seeking comfort from familiar faces. She started recognizing parts of the big world from the windowsill, her favorite spot, where she could see outside. A minor accident occurred a week later. On a hot day, I placed Elsa in a volier with some budgies and three dwarf rabbits while I fetched fresh greens for the rabbits. Normally, this setup was fine for a short period. But this time, the rabbits panicked and injured else, resulting in a strained ankle joint. A vet confirmed no fractures or dislocations, but else struggled to use her leg for days, affecting her preening routine. This neglect led to poorly developed feathers, impacting her ability to fly. Despite the setbacks, else began to hop and fly with enthusiasm even making friends with a swallow that visited the room occasionally. Slowly, she attempted to use her injured leg, showing signs of recovery. Eventually, Els ventured back outside, full of curiosity and energy. Every corner held new discoveries, requiring constant vigilance. I had to ensure her safety from hidden dangers like cats, while she happily explored under the cherry tree and other garden areas. She even took her first sunbath, amusingly spreading her feathers and panting in the heat. Else continued to develop, playing with new toys like a shiny green wire ball and dried cherry pits, and exploring every inch of her surroundings. Her injured leg slowly regained strength, allowing her to scratch herself with both legs, marking significant progress. The story of Elsa's resilience and adaptability is a testament to the strength of nature and the bond between human and animal. Her journey from a helpless chick to a spirited young magpie continues in part two.